Hey, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to show you how to connect your Vitals Bridge 300 unit to a Philips IntelliView patient monitor. This video can also be used to help you connect your Vitals Bridge 300 to most Philips patient monitors, as the connections that we're going to make are very similar. Before beginning, I downloaded the Vitals Bridge connector software from vitalsbridge.com downloads to my computer. I also connected my Vitals Bridge 300 to my computer. To do this, I used a USB cable that was included with my Vitals Bridge, and I plugged it in here and into my computer. You can also connect your Vitals Bridge 300 to a computer using an Ethernet cable or Bluetooth. Ethernet cables are plugged in here on the Vitals Bridge and into the computer, and Bluetooth is configured the same way you would configure any Bluetooth device. The Vitals Bridge 300 can also be controlled from the Vitals Bridge connector app on any Android mobile device or tablet. The app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and your Vitals Bridge is connected to your electronic device via Bluetooth, the same way you would configure a Bluetooth device with any other Bluetooth device. Before beginning, I also connected a carbon dioxide supply system to my Vitals Bridge. I connected the Vitals Bridge carbon dioxide cartridge, which was included with my Vitals Bridge. I was able to attach the carbon dioxide canister to the carbon dioxide regulator by following the instructions that I downloaded from vitalsbridge.com downloads. After connecting these two pieces together, I took this blue tube and connected it to where it says CO2 in on my Vitals Bridge. Once you're ready to have CO2 flowing, simply take the pressure regulator and turn it on so that you have between 15 and 20 PSI of carbon dioxide being supplied to your Vitals Bridge. If you would like to, you can also use a wall supply of carbon dioxide for your Vitals Bridge, but check with your facilities managers to make sure everything is at the proper pressures and that it's safe to use. The reason why we use carbon dioxide for this Vitals Bridge is to simulate capnography. This particular Vitals Bridge has been configured to work with side stream or micro stream capnography technology. Some Vitals Bridges available are able to connect with mainstream capnography technology units. If you would like to connect via mainstream or if you have questions about side stream versus mainstream capnography technology, please contact support at vitalsbridge.com. Once you have your Vitals Bridge on and set up, you can connect it in the Vitals Bridge connector software. Once connected, vital signs will be sent from the computer connector software to your Vitals Bridge. This is important to have on while we set up our patient monitor so that we can check and make sure that each vital sign is working as we make the connections. Let's begin making our connections. The first connection that we're going to make is our carbon dioxide and capnography connection. With your Vitals Bridge, you should have received a small capnography tube that looks something like this. This end will plug directly into your patient monitor, and this end will connect into your Vitals Bridge. To connect to your patient monitor, find the port on the side of your patient monitor that says CO2 MicroStream. Put the tubing into the patient monitor and twist it till secure. Once it's secure, you should hear a vibrational noise coming from your patient monitor. That means the capnography is working. Then take the other end of your capnography tube and put it on your Vitals Bridge where it says carbon dioxide out. Once you have that secured, you should begin to see a CO2 waveform on your patient monitor if the carbon dioxide is flowing. Notice that the CO2 waveforms don't look perfect exactly when it starts, but give your Vitals Bridge a few minutes and it should level out and be what you would expect from a capnography signal. After just a moment, you will also begin to see an ETCO2 reading. That ETCO2 reading should match the ETCO2 reading that you put in on your Vitals Bridge software. If after about five minutes those two numbers don't match closely, come up here in your Vitals Bridge connector software to the configuration tab and you can perform a carbon dioxide calibration. Instructions on how to perform those calibrations can be found on vitalsbridge.com downloads. Once you have the carbon dioxide calibrated, your ETCO2 on your connector software and on your patient monitor should match. The next thing we're going to connect is SPO2. Your patient monitor comes with two separate SPO2 cables. The first cable looks like this. It has one end that plugs into the patient monitor and one end 
that has a seven or nine pin hole plug. Take the end that plugs into the patient monitor and insert it on the side of your patient monitor where it says SPO2. Once it's been inserted, take the second cable, which looks like this, and has a seven or nine pin plug on one end and a finger probe on the other, and insert that into the cable that's already been connected to your patient monitor. Once that's all connected, put the finger probe on your finger so that you can make sure that your finger probe is working correctly with your monitor. If everything is working properly, you should begin to see an SPO2 waveform as well as an SPO2 saturation number and a heart rate. It looks like everything's working well on my monitor, so I'm gonna set this down and grab the oximeter adapter that was included with my Vitals Bridge. The oximeter adapter included with my Vitals Bridge looks like this. You've got one cable that has two matching ends and you've got a gray box that has this white finger on it. Take one of the ends of this cable and plug it in to the gray box where it says SPO2 port Vitals Bridge. Once it's secure, take the other end of that same cable and plug it into your Vitals Bridge where it says SPO2. Now take the SPO2 probe that you've already checked on your finger and place it over the white finger portion of the adapter. Make sure it's nice and secure, then set it down. Wait just a minute and you should begin to see SPO2 waveforms. After the waveforms, give it just a minute and you'll get an SPO2 reading and a pulse. If for some reason you don't get an SPO2 reading or a pulse, simply adjust the SPO2 probe within the adapter box until you get a reading. Notice that the SPO2 reading that I'm getting on my computer screen and my monitor are not the same as the ones that are coming in from my connector software. This is okay, it just means you need to perform a quick calibration. The calibration of SPO2 is done the same way as the calibration for carbon dioxide. You come here to the configuration tab in your Vitals Bridge software and you can perform the calibration as directed by the, by the prompts on screen and you can get further information about how to do that on vitalsbridge.com slash downloads. I'm gonna move these cables out of the way so that we can move on to the next step. The next thing that we're going to connect is our ECG cable. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a three lead ECG cable, though you might have a five lead or a four lead cable. Whatever you have, it should work just fine and the principles will be the same. Take the end of the ECG cable that plugs into the patient monitor and find where you, it says ECG on the side of your patient monitor. Plug the cable in and then take the ECG leads that are on the other end of that same cable and attach them to the buttons on the bottom of your Vitals Bridge. These buttons have little colored stripes underneath each one. The colors on your leads should match up to the colors underneath each button. So we'll take the black lead and plug it in here. We'll take the red lead and plug it in here. And we'll take the white lead and plug it in here. If you have additional leads, they can be plugged in here. Just follow the color patterns. All right. Once you have that plugged in, you should see an ECG waveform as well as a heart rate come up. That's perfect, exactly as we would expect. Just to make sure that the ECG and the SpO2 signals are working properly, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna change the heart rate on my Vitals Bridge Connector app. I'm gonna drop the heart rate down to 60 beats per minute. And you'll notice how the heart rate here for the ECG and the heart rate for the SPO2 are both gonna drop to that 60 beats per minute. That's exactly what we hope would happen. Once you've verified the heart rate, you can return that heart rate to whatever you would like it to be. I'm gonna bring it back up to 80, a nice healthy heart rate. And I'm also gonna check my ECG rhythms. By just changing the rhythm, I'll change it to A stole. And I should get a flat line. It's working well. I'll cha I can change that back to the normal sinus. 
So now we've got the ECG and the SpO2 working properly and we verify that everything works with our connector software. So the next thing that we're going to connect is our invasive blood pressure. Invasive blood pressure has a variety of different cables. The first cable I'm going to show you is a MedEx cable. And this is one that we commonly send out with Vitals Bridge units. You might, however, receive a different cable depending on what type of cables your hospital or institution uses. This particular cable has one end that's gonna plug into our Vitals Bridge and one end that's going to plug into our patient monitor. On the side of your patient monitor, you'll see different places labeled press for pressure. You can plug in your invasive blood pressure cable to any one of these press units. I'm gonna plug this first one in here. And if you don't know which, if you don't know which press mean, which press corresponds to which invasive blood pressure, when you plug in the invasive blood pressure cable, you should see something come up. I saw AVP come up. So that means this invasive blood pressure is going to match up with my AVP and I can plug it into the vitals bridge where it says AVP. Once that's plugged in, you should begin to see an AVP waveform, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna connect one more invasive blood pressure, but this time I'm going to use a different cable so I can show you what might happen if you use a different cable. This particular cable is a BD cable. So we'll take the way it looks slightly different and the adapter that was included with the Vitals Bridge looked like this. You can connect this adapter to the cable that you already have with your patient monitor. You'll just connect it so the two ridges match up. And then you can plug this end into the patient monitor again in any of those spots where it says press. I'm gonna plug it into this one and that should be a PAP signal. And you can see that it says PAP. It's looking for a PAP signal there. Then I will plug it into the PAP section on my vitals bridge. Once I have both of those signals connected and I've got two invasive blood pressure readings, we wanna make sure those invasive blood pressure readings are calibrated. So I'm gonna to come to the connector software and I'm going to click the check boxes where it says zero AVP, zero PAP, and zero CVP. When I do that, it's going to cause the vital signs on my patient monitor to flatline. Once they've done that, I can zero them. You can either zero them from the screen or you can zero them from the back side of the monitor. I'm gonna zero one from the back side of the monitor by pressing zero. And you can see how the line drops on the patient monitor down to the bottom. And then I'll zero the AVP by clicking on the AVP and pressing zero. Or you, after you finish that, you can click zero AVP or zero all press. Once it, everything's been zeroed, and you can see all of the lines on the patient monitor go to the very bottom. You can come back to the Vitals Bridge software and unzero your waveforms, which should calibrate those invasive blood pressures. The next thing we're gonna connect is our non-invasive blood pressure. The non-invasive blood pressure cable that comes with your patient monitor should look something like this. You have one end that plugs into the patient monitor and a second end that would plug into an, a blood pressure cuff. Because not all blood pressure cuffs have the same entry point and, and hardware to, to connect it to the blood pressure cuffs, you're gonna need to configure an adapter using the non-invasive blood pressure kit that was included with your vitals bridge. These are really easy to put together. First, you determine if your blood pressure tube is going to be a one tube or a two tube system. If it's a two tube system, you'll use this Y adapter, but since ours is a one tube, we're gonna pull out this one tube adapter. 
Next, you're gonna go through each of these different adapter pieces, and you're going to see which one fits with this non-invasive blood pressure cuff connection. Once you have picked this out, you can connect that piece right here on the new adapter. I've already prepared one for this non-invasive blood pressure cuff. And once you have the adapter prepared, you simply slide it together and click it into place. You can then connect this end of the tube on your vitals bridge where it says NBP, non-invasive blood pressure. Once that's connected, you can connect this end to your patient monitor where it says NBP. Once that's ready, you're good to collect your non-invasive blood pressure reading. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll close out of that window and I'll click start non-invasive blood pressure reading. You'll hear your patient monitor begin to make noises as well as some clicking noises on your vitals bridge. It'll take just a minute for the non-invasive blood pressure reading to go through, but when it does, we should see down here a non-invasive blood pressure reading that matches whatever we've input on our vitals bridge connector software. If that non-invasive blood pressure reading doesn't match perfectly with what you have on the software, that's okay. We will just rerun the non-invasive blood pressure cuff reading and it should, it should set, fix itself. All right, while we wait for that to go through, we're gonna connect our last cable, which is our temperature reading cable. The temperature cable that we're going to use looks something like this, and it should have been included with your vitals bridge unit. On one end, you have something that will connect to your patient monitor, and on the other end, you'll have this white piece that's going to connect to your Vitals Bridge 300. Find where it says temp on the side of your patient monitor, here or here, and plug that in. Once you have that plugged in, take the other end of your temperature cable and plug it in on your Vitals Bridge where it says T1. The Vitals Bridge 300 supports two temperature readings, so if you'd like to add a second one, you can just plug that into T2. Once it's been plugged in, we'll see a temperature reading over here on the side of our patient monitor, and the temperature reading should match what we have in our Vitals Bridge connector software. And that's all the different connections for the Vitals Bridge 300. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to connect your Vitals Bridge 300 to a simulator. If you come in here to the Vitals Bridge connection software, you can come up to the tab that says simulator. When you click on that simulator tab, any simulators you currently have running in the vicinity are going to show up. I have a virtual simulator already running on my laptop, so I'm going to connect to the laptop simulator by clicking it and then selecting connect. Once I've successfully connected, I'm going to see all these different vital signs appear on my Vitals Bridge connector software. These vital signs are coming directly from the simulation. If I open the simulation control tab, I can then control each of my vital signs. You'll notice how some of these do not have waveforms on our patient monitor anymore. That's because we haven't told the software on the simulation that we have leads connected. To fix that, you just checkbox each of these boxes with the things that you have leads for. So we're going to connect our carbon dioxide, our PAP, our ABP, SPO2, ECG, temperatures. Once we have those selected, those same vital signs should reappear on our patient monitor. Then you can control each vital sign from this page in the simulation software. Or if you choose not to use a simulator, you can always control your vital signs from the manual tab in the Vitals Bridge Connector software. Thank you. Good luck.